Now the last test was all about the VCF's amplitude. Now we're actually interested in the VCF's frequency. So we need a frequency counter or a tuner. Now in my case, uh, the scope software, in addition to being able to show me what my peak-to-peak -peak voltages are, it can also count the frequencies. So I'm in good hands there, as you can see, channel 1 frequency. And uh, we're just running the same program as before, program number 3. That's bank 3 uh, with the uh, the B group activated, the green light LED activated, so we've got a hold function, and if we hold down uh, C4, as you can see here, I'm gonna, if I change the pitch once again, the, as we showed before, the amplitude changes, um, so the amplitude stays the same because it's been nice and calibrated on a per voice basis, but the frequency is changing, so now it says 233 hertz, but what in fact we need is 248 uh, isn't that right, Centigrader of the past? Can you please elaborate? We need a frequency counter or a tuner. Well, yeah, 248. The right. software scope is pretty good piece of software. Oh, gee, is that deja vu or what? Frequency is coming in at 273 hertz. Right, there is the old test that so he's done the other Juno, and so really as he's adjust these, uh, for 248 hertz. And they said it's a B3 pitch even though you're pressing uh, C4. I guess that's just the way it goes. You can't actually have it uh, exactly in key like that. It's going to be one semitone out, but that's all right. If they're all in pitch with each other, you just transpose out, and if you want to do things like play a melody with your filter, um, that's how you do it. You just understand it's going to be one semitone flat. Oh, and that's the musical application. So uh, anyway, here we are. We're looking for 248. Now the trimmers that we're looking for are in fact VR29 for voice 1, VR24 for voice 2. Uh, so the ones that are basically directly beneath the voice chips, if you want to look at it like that, or you can just look at it like they're the ones on the outside of the cluster of four. Either way will do for you. And we're still on the very same test points as before, and we're, of course we're working backwards to the way it's printed on the board because this is the first cluster. So pin number eight is voice number one. Here is VR29, which adjusts this frequency. And so it's going to go over here, point to this guy, and if we adjust it, we're looking for 248. Of course, we want to make it tighter to have a higher frequency. And there is 248 hertz right there. So I'm just going to move to the next voice. This science stuff that they teach you is actually very powerful. Science rules, kids. Bill Nye was not lying. Okay. Taking it. Incidentally, if you have kids, you could not do worse than digging up the old Bill Nye science shows. Uh, he rocks. These days when you see him on TV, he's very pro professorial and, you know, older gent. But if you, uh, if you look at those shot in the early 90s ones, he's a pretty, pretty happening, uh, young-ish, Seattle, bike-driving, outdoors nut kind of fitness dude. It's very cool. Alright, 248 hertz. And we're back to voice number three. Sorry about that. I had a little bit of a glitch there. Uh, the scope was not reading the frequency at all. And I've got it to wake up now. And as you can see, uh, the, it's reading a very low frequency for voice number three. So that's probably one of the reasons why we were having an issue. So I'm going over here and I'm going to ensure that the frequency is up where it ought to be. We want 248 hertz. So as you can see, definitely we needed to calibrate this. We totally needed to calibrate this machine. Alright, so once again, 248. Voice number one, 248. Voice number two, 248. Voice number three, 248. And into no man's land, two, voice number four, 253. I can get this to click on. Come on. 
All right. Yeah, and there we are on voice number four. One, two, three, four. Over here, VR14. And take that down. 248. Yeah, good enough. And voice number five. And we've lost our frequency again. And I think that's because voice number one, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to adjust this a little bit and see if I can get this to wake up. No, sir. Voice number f and The frequency counter is out one more time. How about number six? Hmm. I'm having problems. Alright. And it's not my trigger that's the problem. Okay, let's get number five here again. Alright. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the vertical time base to half. No. Uh, to double. Ah, there, it's tracked it. Okay, by moving the time base to double, I have now tracked it, and as you can see, it's really, really low frequency. So, this is voice number five. One, two, three, four, five. Get that frequency up, please. Wow. Um, okay, I'm a little bit concerned here. Ah, silly me. I forgot that when you press a key, you lose your reference. All right, so let's do this again. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm not invaluable, my friends. I am not planning on adjusting this, changing this uh, video at all. Okay, let's see. This trimmer is just not playing ball with my screwdriver. I'm going to switch over to a flat blade screwdriver. One, two, three, four, five. Get in there. All right. There we go. 248. Perfect. And previous. 248, 248, and here we are, the last guy is 274, so we'll take this down, 248, alright, so once again I'm going to test all of these guys in turn, voice number one, and we've lost our reference because I accidentally pressed the keyboard. 248. Don't make the same mistake I did. 248. Remember that if you press the keyboard inadvertently, you will lose your reference pitch. Voice number three. 248. Voice number four. 248. Voice number five. 248. Voice number six. Close, but no cigar, because that's how picky I am. Come on, you. Whoops. Yeah. I just messed with VR3. I'm going to have to ensure that I didn't screw anything up by accidentally touching VR3. I'll be right back. Okay, I got some good news for y'all. Uh, when I accidentally pressed VR3 or changed it, it didn't affect anything that I'd previously done. In fact, VR3 gets manipulated in this very next step. So, VR3 is part of a row of VRs all along here, uh, starting with 28. So there's one, two, three, four, five. 
and 6. Guess what? One for each voice. And what we are going to be adjusting is the VCF width as per my calibration video 13. So um, le let's see what the guy has to say, shall we? Step 8, VCF width module board. So we're still using TP8 to TP13 and we can keep everything as it was, but now we hold the C6 key down, which is this guy over here. That's right. That's Not the very right. highest one, but uh, the almost highest one. Yeah, that's the one. There. How meta is this? Look at that. Oh, and now I'll press it too. And so will you at home. Wow. This is uh, the Hall of Mirrors here. Adjust each trimmer. You want 992 hertz. 992 hertz. Okay, thank you, Mr. Centigrader in the past. Okay, uh, that's enough of that. Um, so, here we go. And 992 is what we're going for. And as you can see, we've got 899 on the current test point that I've got. And again, that's because I've gone all the way to voice number... Uh, yeah, voice number 6. Because remember, we're still on this first testing block. So it's the same testing block as before. It's just that we're going a couple of octaves higher. And this has to do with the width control. So I'm just going to lift this off and put it back over here to the first one. And the first one, of course, here means, yeah, this means voice number one. What? Yes, voice number one. One, two, three, four, five, six, which is reverse two. And that's the way this block works. Okay, so here we are. It says 968, and we don't want 968. I believe he said we wanted 992, and that's because I've forgotten what he said. You see, even I forget what I said. So what did he say? Yeah, 992. All right. So let's adjust. Starting off with this row up here, VR28. All right. Nine ninety-two. Wrong way, Feldman. There we are. Nine ninety-two. Okay, super. I have a trivia quiz for you. Where was who was wrong way, Feldman? What TV show from the seventies featured? a one-time reference to a third party who wasn't on the show called Wrong Way Feldman. I'll tell you, it's about Gilligan's Island. Okay, uh, and I think Wrong Way Feldman blew a football game for somebody. 992. Moving right along to the next pin. 9, We're now going to VR18. Okay. Next voice, voice five. Oh, it's tedious, I know. But this is it distilled down to as painless as I can make it. One, two, three, four, five. And now, voice number six, the erstwhile VR3 that I tinkered with earlier. See how, how far out it is. 
9.92. So that is in. So I threw it out in my last step, but fortunately this next step was actually the one to calibrate it. So we're good. All right. Looks like we're ready to move on. Now that we've got to number 7, uh, there's something I remember from number 7, and that is we end up doing a bunch of work to calibrate number 7, and then we go right back and do it all over again for number 8, which is the VCF width. But the service manual tells you that procedures 7 and 8 interact, so you have to repeat the steps 7 and 8 over and over again until you're satisfactory. Now the thing about 7, the VCF frequency module, um, the VCF frequency, and uh, the VCF width is that really they just involve the exact same thing. You end up putting a pin down, you connect to the same block as before, and you're using the same test basically, um, and uh, but now you're actually using a frequency counter to count the frequency of what's being played. And test number seven involves pressing the center C and calibrating it for 248 hertz. And then you, the next step, after you've done all of those, is you go and press this C here, and now you're going to calibrate them for 9.92. And um, having done it the hard way a few times in a row, I find it really irritating, because having to move all of these individual pins, uh, it's actually a pin in the ass. So let's just have a look at this and see about doing those two in one step. All right? So this is it. I'm selecting voice number one here, and here's voice number one in the board. And I know that VR29 um, is in fact the one that I'm going to use for seven, and VR28 is the one I'm going to use for step number eight. So uh, basically, it basically works as this. We press down on the center C, and we check for 248 hertz, and we adjust using the guy right underneath here, VR29. Then, having got that just perfect, which we have already done, we hit this higher note here, not the highest C, but the one below it, and come on back and take a look. Is that 992? If not, then you adjust VR28. And then, moving on to voice number two, we're going to repeat the process. Take the pin out. Get to the voice number two. There we go. Press the center C, like so. Is it 248? It is 248. Um, and then, we know that that's 248. If it wasn't 248, then we would adjust VR24, which is directly underneath. And then we press this guy up here, and check to see if we have 992 or not. And this is coming in as 984 to 992. It's not quite 100% correct. So I am going to calibrate this voice number 2. So here you are seeing the combined logic uh, of the procedure. So here it's not this guy, because it's this guy up here. Alright, and still saying 984, 992. Okay, now it's 992 and occasionally popping up to 1 kilohertz, so you kind of have a choice with this guy, one or the other. But we'll leave that where it is. Um, okay, uh, moving on to the next voice. Voice number 3. Is that you see? 247, 248, and mostly 248, and then I'm going to press the higher note, 992, pretty much 992, satisfactory, moving along. You can actually get this job done a lot faster if you do it this way, but I suppose if everything's way out to begin with, you might need to do the whole sweep the first time and go from there. So here we have the next voice, 248, and then I just press the high note and 992, so that's that's acceptable. And then, voice 
number five. We're almost there. Let's see, two forty-eight, and again, this is voice number five. So here's the chips. One, two, three, four, five. So right underneath, this is the guy, and uh, that's for the two forty-eight, and then the nine ninety-two is adjusted up here. Um, so let's press that one to get the 992, and that is certainly acceptable too. So now I'm just going to choose the last one in the test probes. It's the unplugging the test probe and moving it that's probably the most trouble for me, so I prefer it if I don't have to do that as frequently. So just having to repeat and go back and do it again really bothered me a lot. So there's 248 there, and I'm going to press the higher C. And yeah, 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 yeah. That's of course VR3, the one that I accidentally messed with. Whoop. Okay, good enough. All right, so. Steps number seven and eight are now done, and done together. So we're going to move right along. And the next step, of course, is the infamous noise level. So we're going to basically engage program number six, test program number six. Remember right now we've got test program number three running, so we just go up to bank number six to select that. And all hell breaks loose on the oscilloscope. I'm plugged into test point eight which I believe any of the voices would do for this, but we're just plugged into the one that's on the most left most side, which of course corresponds to voice number one, but I think it's common to all of them. And uh, if you take a look at my calibration 15 from the original sequence, you'll see one of the first things I did was I went in and I upped the time base in order to concentrate the amount of noise uh, and, of course, I'm going to adjust the vertical time base as well, so that we're, we've got some space here for what you see over here is the, uh, the, the voltage peak-to-peak -peak being registered by the, uh, by the scope. <clears throat> and uh, uh, ultimately, really, what they're talking about in the service manual notes here is four volts peak to peak for sort of the bulk of it. So I'm not necessarily going to totally be trusting this. Uh, I've got two volts per division on my scope and as you can see this looks like this is two volts, four volts here and two volts. So this is two volts here and four volts according to the grid that is difficult to see right now because of the way that the um, uh, this information is so densely packed, but I believe that this is a 4 volt peak to peak if you consider right here. So in, even though the what, what we're actually seeing here in the you know, the scope software, um, I'm a little less inclined to see it that way. Uh, anyway, it's uh, test point 8 and we go to VR32 and VR32 has its own separate location. And where is he? We are 32, what are you, you bugger? There's 33, there's 34, there's 31, ah, here it is. It's right here, the absolute lower left corner. So, we'll drop a screwdriver in there and have a look at what we can achieve by twisting it. And as you can see, I can bring it in this attenuation in here, and uh, yeah, you take a look at this, two volts uh, per division, and then over here, it's actually saying, well, it's five volts peak to peak. Um, a little bit tricky. Uh, it wants four volts peak to peak, the noise level, and um, I'm concerned that I might be making it too quiet. So really it's kind of a judgment call. I know what my grid says is 4 volts. Okay. Right. 
Now take a look here. If this is 2 volts up this way, and then 2 volts down this way, this is 4 volts peak to peak, and we've captured the majority of the material. However, if we take a look at the picture in the rolling manual, you can see that they show that, but there is a bit of blast outside. So maybe, uh, but then of course my reading here says it's 6 volts peak to peak. So I guess it's anyone's guess. I'm going to leave it like this. I've already, I dialed it back significantly compared to what was originally being shown. And so we'll go with that. And if Dave, Dave, if you think that your noise level is too quiet, you can always go through and have your friend Randall go and repeat this calibration process um, and ensure that VR32 is turned up a bit more for extra juice and then do the steps afterwards because it shouldn't affect the earlier calibration. But that's where it stands right here. So moving right along. Now we're calibrating the pulse width modulation. So this is done uh, by VR31. VR31 being right there. Okay, and VR31 is the pulse width modulation. That handles the amount of pulse width modulation, the duty cycle of it. Uh, PWM, of course, is you get a square wave, and then by using PWM you can variate the width of the square, turning into a pulse wave. Um, <clears throat> terminology, I believe, in my opinion, if it's a 50% duty cycle, it's a true square wave. If you've uh, got it less, and we'll see what a duty cycle is really shortly if you don't already know. Um, so we have to use bank uh, program number five, right? And so it's the same old routine as before. We just go over here and you see we've got program number six running. So we'll make that program number five. There we are, program number five. And I've got that hold function going on, uh, which is always good. And oh, take a look at this. So, and it's telling me it's got a duty cycle of 50% right away. Now, hold down the C4 key, and I'm holding down the C4 key, and I see a duty cycle of 50.3. And uh, I'm thinking, I'm seeing a lot of re repetition here in the time base, so let's actually uh, expand out the horizontal time base so that we can see a little bit more of the wave, like so. Okay, um, and so there it is. The square wave uh, being displayed, and the duty cycle is 50.4%. And essentially, hey, Cinderator, what are we supposed to do? And now we're going to calibrate the PWM. Um, again, DC off, uh, CV offset must be... Yeah, 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 it's been on. Uh, but the program is now 5, so instead of 6, which was our noise program, we are going to program Oh, five. he's going to do that, is he? Okay, we already saw that. Let's move on. See, is our PWM program. Got it, PWM. Thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's have a look then. Uh, we're holding the C4 key down, which we are doing using our... <laughs> okay, I apologize for the rerun content here. It's a video within a video. It should be 50% duty cycle. And here he is, he's using duty cycle as well. And his duty cycle is better than mine. Okay, so basically, this is all I'm going to do. Um, and uh, really, all i got to do is confirm that the rest of the duty cycles are within 48 to 52%. That's the tolerance, 48 to 52%. So it's actually already there, um, very, very close. However, uh, oh, and look, you see, uh, wait a minute, and this is VR31. So VR31 covers everybody. Okay, so I obviously don't want to be tinkering too much because I could over-specify one of them. Okay, that's 51 point two, 51.3, 51.4, 51.1, 51.5. So, if you just kind of take a look at all of them, it's a little high for some of them. I mean, it's still within tolerance, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to VR31 now, right here. 
and I'm going to try and dial it down a little bit. I want the duty cycle closer to 50% right on the money. Okay, that's 50% exactly for voice number one. So now changing the, the jumper here from one to two, 50.8 to 3, 50.8, yeah, 50 50.9, 50.9, 50.7, 50 51.0. So I'm seeing the duty cycle, if I get it exactly for voice number one, it's not, it's just a little bit high. So if we make it a little bit lower instead for voice number one, 49.6, let's say, just for the sake of argument. I'm going to go forward here. As soon as I can get my alligator to let go. And that's 50.4. Hmm. 50.4, 50.6, 50.3, 50.6. So you see what's going on here is I've kind of at, split the difference a little bit. And I think this is better. So that is what I'm going to leave it at. Now the next part of the step, when we loaded this program, this program number five, it's loading it up with a PWM of zero. So we're actually, you don't see that, but that's what was loaded. So now we're going to, we're instructed in the manual, crank it all the way up to 10. All right, so now I've got the PWM up to 10. And take a look at what happens. I'm going to pull it back down again. Okay, this is, here is an example of Pulse width modulation in action. Now it's interesting that the, the actual wave itself is going from a, a nicely balanced square wave across zero to being a pulse that's sort of got a DC offset on it. <clears throat> that might be something that we can fix with a calibration in the next step, or maybe just inherent with the way that it works. But here we are looking at this, and okay, it's saying duty cycle is 3.3%, and that's because I'm reporting what's known as a positive duty cycle. And they're suggesting in the service manual, I'm just going to go over to the service manual, the original one that I was showing, 93 to 97% with PWM set. Now that's because I believe I have my software reporting a positive. Um, PWM. So if I go over here to the display and say, okay, no, no, no measure horizontal and say, give me a negative duty cycle. Right. There. That's the negative duty cycle right there. So as you can see, the, the negative duty cycle is just, you just have to do the math if you want to look at it the other way. Alright, so, um, uh, shouldn't be a problem. This is 96.7, and it says here that it should be between 93 and 97. So 96.7 is totally fine for this voice. So let's go back, and the important thing is it between be between 93 and 97. So 96.8, 96.7, 96.4. Nine six point six and nine six point seven. So there you go. Um, looks to me like everything's fine in this area, and we don't need to do any more calibration in this. So we're going to move along to the next step.